This video teaches some of Barry Harris's soloing ideas applied to the Western swing song, Right or Wrong. Hello, I'm Pete Martin. If you'd like to see more videos in this series, or other videos of mandolin, fiddle, improvisation, and other music subjects, subscribe to my channel. Click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. There's a PDF file that goes with this video. Find this by going to www.petemartin.info, click Videos, and scroll down for the Barry Harris for Mandolin series. Right or Wrong starts with the dominant seventh circle of fifths progression, two measures each of E7, A7, D7, then G. This is a great place to try out some Barry moves. The first thing Barry shows when learning to improvise on specific songs is the chord scale outlines. When you learn these, you know which scale to play where in the tune. Since right or wrong is all dominant seventh and sixth chords, we only need to use those scales. Barry would say right or wrong is the following. E7 up and down, A7 up and down, D7 up and down, G major up and down, G major up and down again, D7 up and down, A7 up and down, D7 up and down. That gets us to the halfway point. The second half, E7 up and down, A7 up and down, D7 up and down, B7 up and down, E7 up and down, A7 up and down, G major up, D7 up, G major up and down. Learn this in example one. Players interested in Western Swing Mandolin should check out Hayes Griffin's great series called Tiny More Tuesday, where he breaks down the electric mandolin playing of the great Tiny More. I've put a link to Hayes' site in the description below. Let's look at a solo for Right or Wrong using Barry's concept. I play it here. If you find the information in this video useful, I ask that you consider supporting my Patreon channel, which is patreon.com slash Pete Martin. For about the price of a cup of coffee, $3 per month, you support the making of videos, instruction articles, transcriptions for fiddle, mandolin, and improvising. Thank you for considering this. I play the solo for right or wrong slow here. Thank you. 
break the solo down here. The beginning of Right or Wrong is just a little uh, kind of rhythmic E7 phrase. So really all that is is the third, the fifth, and the seventh of an E7 chord with a C sharp in there as well. So now if I play that again, but lower the G sharp to G, that makes a nice G7, or uh, I'm sorry, A7 phrase. So it's got the flat 7, 9, 11, and 3 of A7. So that works. Okay. Then we're into the D7 chord, and we're going to start with... Uh, Just an ascending four note cart starting from the third with the very typical half uh, 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 pickup into that from a scale step below. Now we're going to surround the fifth. Chromatically surrounding the fifth like that is a very common bebop device. Now from here, uh, the root of the D7 chord, we're just going to descend the D7 scale with one extra half step. So remember Barry's rules of the extra half steps. When you descend the scale, the dominant scale, one of your options is to play one extra half step between root and flat 7. So that's what we do here. Two, A, well, you can call this a, a three phrase because that's what Barry calls it, but it's also, he calls that a uh, pivot. And then we're just going to go to two notes of a G6 chord, the fifth, D, and the third, G. Okay. All right. Now the next phrase, so, so that's a really very typical uh, bebop-y sounding line. The next phrase is also another very typical bebop sounding line. We're going to do an ascending chord, because we're on the G6 chord right now. We'll play a G major, thinking the G major scale, and we'll just play a, a four note ascending chord from the sixth or the E note but we're gonna do the very typical bebop device of turning this into a triplet and starting a half step below, two, three. Then we're gonna play into the four phrase, what Barry calls four. So if we put these two together, once again, a very typical bebop sound. And then I'm just going to end it with a G on top. Ending your phrases on an offbeat is, once again, a very typical bebop era device. Two, three. Okay. We're still against a G chord here. And the beat will be the open E. And now we're going to descend the, uh, the um, G major scale. We didn't cover this in the half-step rules, but... Oh, oh, yes, we did in the half-step rules. If you start on 6, you can descend using three extra half-steps. So... That's going to be... Our descending scale line starting on E putting one of the extra half steps between 6 and 5 between E and D that E flat the next extra half step will be between 3 and 2 and then between 2 and 1 now here we're just gonna go down a, uh, a G major, then 
hop up a fifth, G B. My website, www.petemartin.info, has videos, instruction articles, transcriptions, information about lessons, plus 13 instruction books I've written for mandolin, fiddle, and improvising. Also, feel free to email any questions or suggestions. Okay, now we're on a D7 chord. We're going to uh, start on B. Go up to C, we're on the D7 scale as well. Go up a chord. Once again, the four note chord with the half step below. Then we're gonna land, we're gonna go down to, to the, the fifth of D, D7. Here we're gonna do Barry's five, four, and three phrase. So, once again, two very common bebop devices back to back. The ascending chord, and notice where we're starting. We're starting on the flat seven. An ascending chord starting on a flat seven is a very common bebop device. Um, we'll look at this in a future Barry video where he calls these the important arpeggios. So we'll look at those then. But this is one of the things we'll look at. So. And once again, we're doing the thing where we start half step below it. Then into the five phrase. This would be a very good phrase to practice through all the keys. Okay. Then this, uh, the next thing is Kind of an A7 arpeggio, though not completely. Then, when we get down to here, it almost turns into a B flat diminished arpeggio. If I think of from G and the next few notes, G, E, C sharp, B flat, that is a B flat arpeggio, and then the next note, that's a chromatic run between basically B flat and G, or in my way of thinking, that's just two more notes with the chromatics included in between of a B flat arpeggio. Uh, B flat uh, diminished arpeggio, excuse me. Remember the B flat, uh, okay, the chord is A7 here. A7 is derived from the B flat uh, the B flat diminished arpeggio. Do you remember Barry's uh, uh, rule of family where you take a diminished and then you lower one note at a time? So if I would take um, a B flat diminished and lower the B flat note to A, that's A7. So I could very easily use the B flat diminished against A7 because it's family. And I could use any of the other dominants against that as well. Any of the other dominants of the family. Okay. Um, now, uh, I don't remember where I've learned this from, but it's a really common phrase that I hear we're, we're against the D7 chord here. We start on the second or the ninth, the E note, and ascend chromatically to F sharp, the third, then jump up to the root and descend chromatically to the flat seven. This is a really common phrase in a whole lot of different styles of improvising that I've looked at, um, but definitely one in jazz as well. And then this phrase I've heard, uh, I, I can't remember who I transcribed this from. It might have been uh, uh, alto player uh, Lou Donaldson. Now that I think about it, I think it was. 
But that's a phrase that I hear often enough and definitely, like I said, I think I learned it from Lou Donaldson. So it's definitely a, a very typical thing in the style. But it's a really nice little kind of melodic phrase that flows one phrase into the next. So I really like using this kind of phrase. At this point, we're halfway through the solo. So um, now uh, I'm going to get to a phrase. I haven't heard this phrase verbatim from Johnny Gimbel, but Johnny would quite often halfway through his solos in a tune like Right or Wrong play another much simpler uh, little melodic phrase, kind of like happened at the beginning. And this is a place where he would do it, and this is a phrase very similar to what he would do. So this is basically just an E7 type of arpeggio with a rhythm to it to give it some melodic value. So that's nothing but root 3, 5, and flat 7 of an E7 chord. Okay. Uh, this next phrase, once again, I think I got it from from Lou Donaldson, but it's really, it's pretty cool. It's kind of an ascending G major chord in a number of ways against an A7. And very common bebop device. And once again, this is what we'll take a look at in a future episode of what Barry calls uh, his important arpeggios. Okay, so what am I doing here? I'm starting on G, the flat 7 of A7, playing mostly a G major chord, but I've got an A note in there as well. Jumping over to A here, now I'm ascending the A7 scale with the extra half step, then jumping down to A, ascending chromatically to B, then uh, doing a surround into the third. Another very common bebop phrase that I hear all the time. Once again, I think I got it from Lou Donaldson. I can't be 100% sure, but uh, I hear this quite a bit. Uh, so all I did was stick the... Uh, the important arpeggio of G major, the flat seven of the dominant chord, um, in front of that. Now, this is basically just a little rhythmic phrase on a D7 scale, but then leading down to a D sharp, which is where the B7 chord comes in. And that, of course, is the third of B7. Then this little B7 uh, arpeggio. You know, uh, flat three to three. The open D to the D sharp. And here I shift to what violin players call half position to get the uh, D sharp note with my index finger on the D string and then my middle finger on the A note of the G string. Okay, the next phrase, once again, very typical bebop sound. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm playing a four note chord on the E7 and then starting a half step below, two, three, and turning the triplet into, uh, I mean turning the four note chord into three of those notes being a quarter note triplet. Now once I get to the F sharp note here, and notice I'm still in this half position, so my index finger is on the first fret, my ring fingers is on the... 
um, uh, third fret. And come to think of it, I'm still against a B7 chord right here. And it's when I hit this F sharp note right here that I'm against uh, the E7. So this is where I start the E7 scale. But here, all those notes are against the B7. So that's why the D sharp note is because that's in the B7 scale. Now, when I hit here, uh, remember when you start on the, th the, the second in a dominant scale, you can descend using two extra half steps. The half step between two and one and the half step between uh, the root and flat seven. So that's what I did. Now I'm coming up a five note chord this time. In the E7 scale, flat seven, uh, second or nine, uh, fourth or 11, six or 13, and once again to the second or the ninth. Then I'm playing, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. This may be as common a bebop phrase as I hear. And especially when it's played with the chord in front of it. I think maybe the second or third bebop uh, solo that I transcribed had this in it a couple of times. And once I, you know, I, so I really like this, so I learned it, and I can't tell you how often I've heard it from that point forward. So, if we put all these together, this is a really great set of bop phrases, and this would be another good thing to practice in all the keys. Two, three. Just a wonderful phrase. Um, then here's a little A7 phrase. Um, sorry, I had to think of for a minute what the phrase was. Um, then we're going into the G chord. Little uh, surround of the third. So, fourth, flat third, third, very common device. And down to the root of a G, because we're on a G chord here, G6. Uh, down to the six and back up. Here, uh, we're going to go against a D7 chord, so I'm going to start on an E note on the offbeat, uh, three, four, one. And once again, go to a surround into the third of the G7 chord. And those last things are just a G6 arpeggio. Try some ideas out that you make up using Barry's system. In the next video, we will look at comping ideas for right or wrong. If you have questions or suggestions, please use the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm Pete Martin. Thanks for watching.